Hey there, Dengo Stu here. Today's video is about adding a water separating fuel filter to an outboard motor. The fuel filter I'm going to be adding is uh, Eastner brand. Um, it lists itself as being, I'll show you the part number there, it lists itself as being a replacement for a mercury part which is there. So despite being sold as a replacement mercury part, obviously all outboards use the same fuel, have the same requirements to not have water in the fuel. So I've got no reservations about putting this onto this Honda motor. The fuel hose diameter really is about the only consideration when you're putting one of these in. I'll quickly go through what comes with the kit. I refuse to call it an unboxing. This is the filter, the water separating filter. This is um, a replaceable item. So this is the sort of the, the service item that you would replace. So these are purchasable separately. Then you've got the bowl in the bottom. This bowl is where the water collects and where you can drain the water from. Then you've got the head of the unit that you mount to the boat and the bowl screws on the bottom here. Then here you have a variety of inlets, outlets and blanking plates. These fuel filters need to be mounted between the primer bulb and the tank itself. Obviously the place to mount these is somewhere between the fuel tank itself and the motor. Uh, so I'm going to go at the stern here. I'm actually thinking this brace is a really good place for me to do it because if I put it on the transom itself, I think I'm going to get cables and pipes and things in the way. I obviously don't want to go anywhere through the hull if I can avoid it because then I'm probably looking at building some sort of mounting plate or at least heavily waterproofing those the holes I drill in the hull. Although up at this height, can't really complain. There's already just holes all through this. The previous time is drilled a hole to put ropes along the gunnel or something. Not quite sure what they were thinking there. Anyway, uh, so the thing about this brace is it's roughly the right vicinity. You know, I've got the fuel tank down here to my right and the engine obviously in my left. I can drill right through this brace. I can get some bolts and nuts on the back of here and I'm not actually going through the hull anywhere. It also is in a position where if I drain the water I can get a container underneath the fuel filter to capture the water that I drain and if there's any spillage it just goes into the bilge water. So I think this is a pretty good position. So what I need to look at here, I'm just going to go and have a look what these holes through, these are the two holes I'm going to mount. I think they look about, probably about 6mm bolts. So I'll go and measure this, I'll find some suitable bolts and we'll just mount this head section first. It's now about three hours later and I've realised these are 8mm bolts, not 6mm bolts. It didn't take me the whole three hours to figure that out, I also went and had some Chinese. I'm going to position this mounting top plate onto the support here. So I'll just rest it here and mark the two bolt hole locations, drill those and then we'll mount it up. I'm just going to put a little bit of this Duralac in the aluminium holes now because I've got a, going to use stainless steel fasteners and I don't want the stainless steel reacting with the aluminium. On these bolts I'm just going to use one of these spring washers just to stop the nut coming undone. This top plate's mounted really securely now so I'm, I'm happy with that there. I'm now going to start putting in these uh, barbs and the blanking plugs. This particular filter supports two outboards, two tanks etc. But in this case we're going to single. So I'm just using one in, one out, and I'm blanking off the other in and out. Because this fuel filter has two in and two out on it, I need to blank two of them off. Which ones you blank off is entirely up to you. I could have it coming in this input, out this output, and blank these two off. Or I can blank these two and have it coming in here and out here. These ones send it to the edge of the filter and then these ones come from the centre. So whichever way it passes through the filter. 
in my instance, I've decided I'm going to blank off these two and have the fuel coming in here. The line for my fuel tank is going to come from under the seat. So it could go to here and then travel across and head out this way. But I think by keeping all the hoses on this inboard side, I'm going to keep them more protected. So I'm going to put both plugs on this outboard side and keep all the hoses this side. Obviously, it's easiest for me to use this output because at least then it's heading towards the outboard rather than having to loop back as well. Before I put these blanking plugs in, or these barbs for that matter, I'm going to put some of this Permatex thread sealer on. This particular thread sealer is fuel resistant, so it won't have any trouble working on this filter. I don't need to cover the threads. I'm just going to put some around the lower threads and then wind it in. Once I've got these all started, I'll go ahead and tighten them up. The other reason for not putting thread sealer all the way down these is because they're tapered fittings. So they will stop winding in before they've actually bottomed out. The trick here is to start developing a sense, and this is something I think is really important with all sort of mechanical things, of when something's starting to feel tight, starting to feel quite snug, but you're not cranking it to the point of splitting it or snapping it or whatever. And I know that's quite tricky to sort of get across in a video. I guess all I'm saying is start really sort of focusing on what you're feeling through a spanner. And by focusing on that and actually sort of paying attention to how it feels, you'll over time you'll start to build up a, a sort of a muscle memory of what is quite a good a good torque to have on it. Torque specs are great, obviously, where it's critical, but in this sub situation, they're not going to give you torque specs for it. So just make sure it's starting to feel snug, but you're not to the point of really using muscle, and you're going to literally either crack the fitting or strip the head off the bolt. The next thing I do is assemble the rest of this filter. The filter component goes obviously sort of writing side up. There's an O-ring on this side and plastic on this side. The plastic side goes down. This O-ring, I'm also just going to put a little smear of uh, oil on it. And once they're on, they just screw on clockwise as always. Once again, tight enough so the O-ring's well and truly bedded and not going to leak, but you don't have to use all your strength. The final piece of the puzzle is this clear bowl that goes at the bottom of the filter. This way you can see any waters in the fuel because the water will sink to the bottom and it's got its own O-ring as well. Okay, so now I'm going to cut the fuel line and put this fuel filter in the circuit. I'm going to position this fuel filter between the priming bulb and the fuel tank. So I'm going to go fuel tank, filter, filter, priming bulb, priming bulb, outboard. With the fuel line coming out of here, I want the bulb to be somewhere accessible. You know, I don't want it to sort of have to lean right down. So I want a bit of slack to do that. And I also need enough slack so as the outboard turns port and starboard, that fuel line never goes taut or never gets kinked to restrict the fuel flow. I've got my hose clamp on this fuel line, then I'm just going to press it onto the bar, all the way, slide that hose clamp up over the, up over the bag, and just tighten it up. Once again, firm enough not to leak, not so firm that you start cutting into the hose. Bit of a theme, isn't it? So this is what I've got on the output side of the fuel filter. I've got a couple of feet going to the primer bulb and then probably another couple of feet going to the outboard. Plenty of slack for the outboard to turn around and gives me plenty of access to, to operate this, this primer bulb without having to reach right down to the transom. On the inlet side, I've got uh, probably a couple of metres. That way I can position the fuel tank wherever I want in the boat and I can also pull the fuel tank out onto the dock to refill it without disconnecting the fuel hose. All that's hooked up now, so I'll grab the camera and I'll show you around. So here's my fuel line from the tank. 
just goes down and under the seat. Over here it comes to the input side, then goes out the output side. The other two inputs and outputs are blanked off. This output comes along here to the priming bulb, which obviously has to go in the right orientation to pump. And then a couple more feet here into the outboard. And that's it, so it's a pretty simple job. What I'll do now is just start priming this up. It's a pretty big filter, so it can take a while to prime with the bowl once you've got it installed and it's empty. So if you want to make that a little bit easier, you can actually fill this with fuel, fresh fuel, before you start priming. Now the fuel bulb's gone firm and it's fully primed, I'm just going to wheel the boat outside and we're going to start it up and just check for fuel leaks. As you can hopefully see there, there weren't any obvious fuel leaks. The next step would be now to take it for a bit of a run on the water, which I'll be doing in a few weeks, and then just running along at a slightly higher throttle, you know, get to a mid-throttle range, have somebody driving while you just have a quick look at the back and inspect the fittings, just to make sure none of them start leaking with higher fuel pressure. So there are quite a few advantages to these sorts of fuel filters. One is there's just a bigger capacity to them to filter junk out of the fuel compared to those little fuel filters you see under the cowling. Also, they hold more water. So even though the ones under the cowling often will be of a water separating nature, the water will sink to the bottom. They can only hold 20 mils of water, whereas these can hold probably 200 mils. Also, they give you a lot of visibility of the fuel you're running. Because you've got that clear bowl, you can see the fuel readily. You can check it more often. And you can see for clarity whether there's any water in the bottom. And once again, it means you can drain that water out without even having to open the cowling. So you're more likely to actually do it and to notice it. So I think they're a really good thing to install. As you can see, it wasn't a big job, pretty straightforward. Um, I think the only real tricks are just make sure you, you don't have any leaks. So use the, the thread sealant, a fuel safe thread sealant. Use high quality stainless steel hose clamps. The quality of the fuel line you use is also really important. That smooth gray fuel line that you see in those pre-made hoses with the bulb and the fittings on the end isn't very UV resistant. It tends to go very brittle and quite stiff very quickly if it's left in the sun. And let's be honest, most boats spend a lot of time in the sun. Well, thanks for watching. I think this is a pretty simple DIY job. Obviously it's important to get certain things right because you don't want fuel links, but it's definitely within the realm of most people to get this installed. I think it's a really good upgrade to do for your boat if you don't have one of these fuel filters in because it doesn't matter how good your motor is, no motor runs well on bad fuel or fuel with water in it, whatever. So it's really one of those things that I think is just a great insurance policy against something going wrong. Any upgrade you can do that increases your chances of you know, making it home under your own steam instead of getting towed in by someone has, has got to be well worth the, the, the expense and the time to do it. All right, well, thanks again. Take care. I uh, hope you enjoyed. If you did, please rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time. See ya.